Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on with our discussions of microbiology and start covering some gram-negative bacteria. The first bacteria we'll discuss in the gram-negative category is Neisseria. So as we have discussed, it is a gram-negative diplococci, and it metabolizes glucose, and it produces IgA proteases. So what is the, what is the significance of the IgA proteases? Well, these IgA proteases are enzymes that will go cleave the IgA, and it allows bacteria to adhere to and colonize mucous membranes. If you remember, IgA is found in the mucous membrane tract, oftentimes in the respiratory system, so... By having an IgA protease, we can decrease the body's defenses against these bacteria, allowing them to adhere and colonize in that area. The three bacteria that produce these IgA proteases are the Shin bacteria, and that stands for Strep pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza type B, and Neisseria. Some facts about Neisseria specifically is that it contains lipooligosaccharides that have a strong endotoxin activity. And it is often intracellular, meaning it is found often within neutrophils. So in this picture over here, you can see some of these neutrophils, such as this one, that has many, many Neisseria bacteria inside that neutrophil. We do find some of this bacteria floating elsewhere outside in the plasma, but for the most part, we are going to find them within these neutrophils because they are often intracellular. We're going to compare and contrast the gonococcal and meningococcal in just a minute, but a way that you can determine the difference between the two is the acid production in meningococci covers maltose and glucose, whereas the gonococci only covers glucose. So you have the Mg for meningococcal gives you your maltose, glucose, and then gonococca only has the G, giving us just glucose. So let's look at a compare and contrast between the gonococca and the meningococca. As you can see here on the slide, the gonococca has NO highlighted. This is going to be important in determining if it's meningococci or gonococca due to the presence or absence of certain features. So, the polysaccharide capsule is present in meningococci, but because we have no in gonococci, there is no polysaccharide capsule here. As far as meningococci goes, it has a maltose acid detection, but there is no maltose acid detection in the gonococci. Once again, NO, no maltose. And finally, there is no vaccine available for gonococci. That's all going to be due to the variation in the pilus proteins, which are helping in the motility of this bacteria. Whereas, in contrast to the meningococci, it does have a vaccine. It's a type B vaccine that's available for patients that are at risk of uh, meningococcal infections. Gonococci, as we know, gonorrhea is sexually uh, or perinatally transmitted and meningococci is more transmitted with respiratory or oral secretions. The main diseases caused by the gonococci bacteria, specifically going to be gonorrhea, septic arthritis, neonatal conjunctivitis, and that's typically going to be found two to five days after birth, pelvic inflammatory disease, and Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome. Meningococci will cause meningococcemia with petechial hemorrhages, as well as gangrene toes, meningitis, Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome, which has four significant findings, which is adrenal insufficiency, fever, DIC, and shock. To diagnose gonococcal infections, we use the NAT, which is the nucleic acid amplification test that helps us determine if we see the genetic material of the gonorrhea bacteria, and it helps us get a positive or a negative diagnosis. Meningococci is diagnosed by a culture from the actual fluid or by PCR. So if we're talking about something that's meningitis, we have to actually gain access to that particular fluid that could be infected with meningococci, so we're going to have to do something like a lumbar puncture. 
we are able to reduce the spread of gonococci using certain types of prevention. So for sexual transmission, condoms are effective. Uh, and for transmission from a mother to a newborn, the erythromycin eye drops that are given immediately after birth helps prevent neonatal blindness associated with gonococcal uh, infections and neonatal conjunctivitis. As far as meningococci goes, we can treat that with some of our antibiotics. Uh, we can use rifampin, ciprofloxacin, or ceftriaxone for prophylaxis if we do have somebody that we know is a close contact. So if we're talking about uh, a patient that has meningitis and is in a university setting in a, a dorm room, then we can give all of their roommates or suite mates the, one of these medications to help de decrease the risk of them catching the same meningococcal infection. How we treat these varies just a little bit, but for the most part, ceftriaxone is going to be our main treatment for gonococci and meningococci. Uh, with gonococci, we do also add azithromycin or doxycycline because we oftentimes see gonococcal or gonorrheal infections alongside of chlamydia. They a lot of times will be co-infections, so we'll give ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or doxycycline to help cover both of those potential infections. When we're referring to meningococci, ceftriaxone is one of our best ones. And if you remember, the ax in ceftriaxone helps us to remember that this does cross the blood-brain barrier. So it is effective in use for meningococcal meningitis. We can also use penicillin G for this, but we definitely our first choice of drugs is going to be ceftriaxone due to its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.